Our next guest is uh, a legend. And uh, I remember walking around my choir room, uh, singing uh, Miss Saigon, and having my choir director inform me that I should know and be, be well informed that the best alto in the world is Leia Salonga. She's a Tony Award winner. She's a star of stage and screen. And she's voiced not one, but two Disney princesses. She is, in fact, a Disney legend, and she's here tonight. I'm thrilled to welcome Leia Salonga, the stars in the house, all the way from the Hi. Philippines. Hi! <laughs> Hi! 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 I, I, I can find you behind you, in your face! Nice. I've, always just, I've just been doing it online on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. Hi, Alan! It's good to see you! I can't... Yeah, this is... um. So, you... This is so amazing to be able to sit here with both of you because... Leah, you've had this really incredible career that really almost didn't happen, right? I mean, you, you, you get—they go all around the world searching for searching for Miss Saigon, searching right. for who is going to play this role. They go to London, they go to Broadway, they go to Los Angeles, they go to Hawaii, don't they? And then yeah. they, they make their way. Landed to Manila. in Manila. Yep, and they, they find came to you. the Philippines. Um, how did I hear about it? Okay. Um, there, there was an ad in the paper announcing it, but my mom, who is also my manager, was very, very skeptical. And she got a phone call from the president of the Singers Union here in the Philippines saying there are these producers who are coming from the West End who want to audition young women for this show. And my mom is like, are, are we sure that they are not these fly-by-night people who come in, take advantage of young girls and then just leave? You know, and and so the the singers union president said, no, 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 no. These guys are absolutely legit. And before that phone call was made, there was actually a meeting that was held by that union with the members of the board, trying to figure out who to um, who to call to send to that audition. And my name ended up on the list. I was in university. I was a pre med student, um, but I had already had like 10 years of experience doing theater, film, television, recording. So I was not exactly a neophyte when I when it came time to audition for Miss Saigon. But yeah, they came to Manila, they found me, they found my understudy, they found a whole lot of people for the ensemble and understudy roles. And so it was it was a major it was a major haul that Cameron McIntosh ended up with when it came time to cast Miss Saigon. So, yeah. And so for a year and a half, I lived in London, and then I was brought across the pond to New York and was in the Broadway production for about a year. And then... And then... And then, then, then <laughs> look at that! <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then you, you, you go on, you win the Tony, and how does this happen? That you become the singing voice of Jasmine, and 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 what was that? How did that work? And then, Alan, how did yeah? How did... <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a there's a story about that. Um, it turns out that I think quite a few of the ladies in the company had already auditioned for this new Disney movie. I hadn't heard anything, but they were all whispering in the hallways, like, "Have you did you sing for that Disney thing?" And I'm like, "What Disney thing is is everybody talking about?" And then after one of the performances, the stage door guy says, there's a note for you on the board, on like the board right by the stage door. And it was from Albert Tavares and it's from the casting director. He says, we've been looking for you. Would you please give me a call? <laughs> um, and it was about a new Disney film. And so it was, it was in February, I think it was around Valentine's Day that I actually went to audition for Alan and Tim and, um, and John, the directors and I think, who else was there? Uh, David Friedman was also there. I think Chris Montan might have been there. I can't remember everything. <laughs> I can't remember everything, but I remember, I remember Alan and I remember Tim. And I showed up without any makeup on my face in a really ugly winter sweater. And I think it might have been my first audition in New York and it was happening during the run of Miss Saigon um, and so when I went in I shook hands with everybody at the table including Albert um, 
that finally I could put a face to the name of the person that left me that note. And and then and, and I think here comes, I think Alan was the one who said, um, we're going to put our heads down because we just need to hear your voice. We don't really need to see your face. What a relief, because I, I was not <laughs> feeling cute on that particular day. And I remember standing on the, there was an X on the floor, I think, and I remember standing on it and I sang Part of Your World from The Little Mermaid. So that was my audition piece. And after I was done, after I was done with the last few notes of that, Alan gets up, heads to the piano, calls me to the piano, and then starts playing a, a passage of Part of Your World, but moving it up a semitone at a time. He just kept on going higher and higher and higher. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> What is he making me do? Oh, and, 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 you know, I have no idea what, what were you thinking when you were doing that to me? I'm sorry. Alan, don't, don't, be, don't be sorry. No, it worked. It was fine. I don't remember any of this. I, it's, it's always, <laughs> you know, my memory is like, I, I can remember scores I wrote, but this is, all I, I remember, one thing that's indelibly in my mind is seeing you in Miss Saigon. It okay. was, that was love. You just look at her and you just go, oh my god and i mean it's just the performance tears your heart out yeah oh, thank you. your face your whole being it just tears your heart out so i i was i'm sure i was sold before you you know <laughs> you had i um, known that but no it's okay <laughs> was there ever alan was there ever any moment with any of these films of you know specifically like aladdin when you know you get the opportunity to work with these powerhouse talents like Leia Salonga or Jody or Paige, that you it does does it inform the writing at all? No, no. Um, I like it what we do. We're architects. We design a house mm -hmm. that other people are going to live in. Yeah. So in a way, you know, the role was written, and then Leia comes in and then breathes life into it just, you know, gives birth to this role and it's forever got her spirit running through it strongly. Um, but no, the role was written, you know, before. Um, and um, it, Does it affect anything musically? You know, like when, she, you know, when, she, when she's singing, when she's, and she's falling, uh, falling and tumbling and, you know, was there anything like that? <laughs> Probably, maybe. The, the uh, but the character will affect what I write, but the okay. singers, as, as you can tell from the, the, the cruel anecdote, I can be a little brutal on, I mean, I'll, first of all, I had, especially at that time, I had a ridiculous range and I used to write to my range and, and singers would go, damn you Menken, because <laughs> I did four and a half octave things. And you know, there are people who will then go, Alan, that's not practical. I never, but I don't remember Leia having any issue with, I mean, she was. Oh, no, man. I didn't. So I, I just, I was just thinking, <laughs> I didn't have any issue, but I'm like, what, why is he playing part of your role? Why are we going higher and higher? And then I figured out why. Um, what, once I went into, okay, this is, I, I think this is why. Because A Whole New World, I think by then had already been written. Well, in yeah. A particular, in a particular key. And it's, 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 duets are funny because you're writing for two people. So whatever key you kind of put something in has to accommodate mm -hmm. two very unique voices yes. in two no voice ranges. So, I mean, I remember Brad having, Brad Kane having a tough time because it was so low. And, but, and then for me, it was high and then it would jump even higher, which would help him. But I was like, mm -hmm. okay, this is really high. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, but we also have to remember, I'm not the first person doing Jasmine. I'm like, and both of us were, Brad and I were like 11th hour additions to oh. it because Scott Weinger and Linda Larkin, neither of them, they're, they're the speaking voices of Aladdin yeah. and Jasmine. Which Linda Could Larkin, believe, yeah, Linda Larkin, Cannot believe, say, yeah, Linda Larkin does not that's, sing. That's, yeah, that's, and that's the other part of it. Yes, we had to match your your voice to her voice you know yeah I, 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 it had to be a seamless it had to be a match audiences needed to believe it was just one person doing everything um you know and and linda and i could not look any more different from one another um 
Like, like seriously, she's of course, she's of course, totally. She's blonde, and I'm totally not. Um, <laughs> until you put some bleach near my hair, uh. but it's like <laughs> ideas. Um, but yeah, but they were able to. I think I guess they were able to find a couple of people whose spirit and you know voices matched who yeah. was already there, and Linda. And Scott were just so magical in their portrayals of Aladdin and Jasmine. Yeah. And yeah, so I think it was, it, I think a lot of it was, okay, for practical reasons, we have to get this person because they match the person that's already recorded all of this also, right. but had to, so yeah, so the, the requirements were a little specific. Also, remember, Aladdin was like tumbling into shape. There had been a yeah. yeah. Howard passed away. Then came the, the day we call Black Friday when the whole thing was turned on its head practically and became a very different movie. Then ha Tim came in, certain songs were removed, Proud of Your Boy was removed. And yeah, I was gonna mention that Proud of Your Boy, I think is such a standout. And it, um, and I know it's you- It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And I've seen you, I've seen you perform it. it obviously it's a, it's, a, it's a part of the musical. I mean, how was, can you talk? <laughs> Here we go. But, but you know, I can't. <laughs> Can you believe what it has inspired? You know that the Proud Boys claim. Oh God! But not, by the way, not because they love the song. No. Because they heard it performed, they said, "This is the most annoying song we've ever heard." Who would be oh. proud of wanting your mother to be proud of you? And so they took it out. We're proud boys. So at least I can take away from this that it's for the opposite of reasons. Um, anyway, yes. Um, but Proud of Your Boy was cut. Uh, Backpacker Marl at Gassim and, and said we wrote uh, Home in the World, um, a One Jump Ahead, and a song for Jafar called Why Me that ended up not. not oh, being I remember good. hearing that. Yeah. Which was, yeah. I remember, I, 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 I was seeing something about that in the documentary where you, where you were talking about that song specifically and how it seemed to be a reflection of, of what was going on in, in... Oh, that was, another one's called Humiliate the Boy. Dang, okay, Humiliate the Boy. I wrote the song called Humiliate, because Why Me was Tim, but before that we had written okay. the song Humiliate the Boy. And in Humiliate the Boy, um, Jafar is taking away everything from Aladdin one at a time. He's taking his clothes, taking his powers, taking his, you know, everything being removed from him. And at that time, and how without it being written, Howard was getting these neuropathies. He lost his, lost the sensation. He lost yeah. his voice. He lost his eyesight. One at a time, everything was was going. Um, and so it, it, but I don't think Howard ever wrote deliberately wrote a song that was, you know, making a comment on what was going on in his own body. But I think it, you know, like like with. Uh, um, the mob song, you know, which which obviously people put an interpretation on. I think it's just coincidence, really. Right. So then, so okay, so you so you got a whole new movie, and Leia comes a in. A whole new movie, yeah. <laughs> as the writer, as a as a writer of the music, was was this the most? Would you say Aladdin was the most difficult project you encountered this at this point, or was there? something else that sticks out in your mind? Uh, I mean, they, all, all the projects have, have a challenge of their own. So I wouldn't call it the most difficult. Um, I, you know, for me emotionally, with Howard gone and me starting a new collaboration, um, there's obviously a feeling of, you know, will I be as good with another collaborator? What will, and of course, the first song I wrote, it, you know, was a whole new world. So. I kind of answered the question that I was going to be okay, um, but uh, I remember us at BMG Studios, a great session. Remember, you and Brad off of the ISO booth, yeah. and we were playing and we were doing doing the whole the world live. It was one of those moments that was so transcendent and thrilling, um, and it, it's just amazingly exciting and. Um, and Aladdin did, it came together so fast, and it had to, because there was a the pressure. The movie was being released, and all these changes were happening, and they were tumbling over each other, and somehow they ended up working. Um, and it was just, you know, 
of a, such a relief. Um, and it, be, it became me, you know, when I was that, it was the, the highest uh, grossing animated movie ever. Probably, the, yeah. No, it was until, until, why? until, right. Until, until the, 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 <laughs> the, blank, and then Frozen, it came in and conquered that. But like you, but you set the stage for these things. I mean, you were, I mean, you go on and you do Pocahontas, you go on and you do, yeah, um, oh, of Dom and you, but you are giving the blueprint essentially with your, with these leading ladies, you're giving the blueprint that has informed and changed how we, it, uh, uh, it even take in pop culture, right? I mean, like, and how we ad 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 kind of respond to it. Well, Howard, uh, and I, I, I was glad to be a part of that. But that's I, also, but uh, Alan, Alan, you, Alan, I mean, it's also you. I mean, you've done, you've done Sister Act the musical, you've done Bronx Tale, you've done, I mean, you have. Well, of course, I mean, I, I've done a lot of things and I love doing them, um, but it, it's it, it's the most collaborative medium. You know, to be in the room with with your lyricist and with like right now, I'm back with Stephen Schwartz. We're doing uh, the sequel to Enchanted, and it's incredible to just to once again see what collaboration. The, I with Little Mermaid, I got to collaborate with Lin Manuel Miranda on new songs. That was incredible. Or be, with Aladdin, Pasek, with with Pasek and Paul for uh, Speechless in the Aladdin movie. Um, and each collaboration just brings new life. Uh, to what I do, and and thank God for that. I um, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I I feel like music just comes through me, and I'm I'm glad to be a conduit. I well, it's it's clear that here's a picture of you together. <laughs> I was going to say, it's a once on this island that's backstage. Which is I want to talk show. about before we like before Leia goes and we bring everyone back. I do want to say, Leia, you have had this epically massive, storied career. And that, that only very lucky, yeah. From Allegiance to Once on This Island, uh, you are forever. I mean, Ava is insanely amazing, but you will always be Miss Saigon. What is what has been the greatest? And you're the voice of a second Disney princess, a singing voice. Right. That's never been done. I mean, so so you get to sing Reflection as well. I mean, you have these incredible things that are your career. When you look back at this, and you were so celebrated. What for you is the greatest jewel in this really epic crown? I don't know. I, I don't know. It's it's difficult to name one thing. Yeah. Um, however, it's thanks to Miss Saigon that a lot of ev that everything else kind of you know tumbled one over one after another. If, um, but then I can also go back to Les Mis because without that musical and me choosing on my own to be my audition piece for Miss Saigon, you know? So it's, everything is kind of so closely connected to one another that mm -hmm. it's really hard to pick any one thing that stands out in my career. So I, I'd rather just not. And, <laughs> and, 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 and I have, and, and, and look at, as you say, the, a jewel in the crown and just look at the crown as a whole, as, as yeah. one big, thing where everything is ev every part is important every jewel is important um so in my career i think every little step that i take cre you know comprises this thing for which i am just eternally we and will forever be grateful we to are have. Very grateful. there's 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 there are very few talents in this world that are, are like the, the two of you sitting here <laughs> thank <laughs> you and I'm very, very overwhelmed to be able to even have this. Before we bring everyone back, I want to say uh, thank you to uh, Mernaz in California for your donation tonight. Uh, loves Alan and Jody and Little Mermaid at the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, made me cry with joy. Leia, Zeppanine, Jasmine, Mulan, and the True Icon page is a remarkable artist. As Bell, thank you. Drew from Ohio for your $51 donation. Mitch Cooper and Andrew Wallertine, Wallentine. Thank you for your donation. Daniel from New York City, thank you for your $103 donation. Alexis from Michigan, thank you for your $5 donation. Now please welcome everyone back for tonight. I'm so thrilled to welcome back Paige O'Hara, Jody Benson, and of hey. course, Alan Benson and Leah Salonga. Now before we go, and Alan's gonna lead us off with a song, I do wanna ask each of you, um, as Disney princesses, is there like a secret handshake or something I need to be <laughs> for, like, 
Oh, I love that photo! Oh, I love that photo! Oh, I love that I mean, now, look, I mean, so, I mean look, you're in this company of of Anika Noni Rose and uh, Kristen Bell. And of course, you all come back for Vanellope von Schmitz and Slaughter Race, which Alan wrote. Um, <laughs> I mean, this journey for each of you has been so different, but so remarkable. And there's only so many of you. Aww. You know, so for Thank each you of you, maybe it's a parting question before we go. Before we go, could you each talk, maybe we'll start with Jody. Can you talk about what this what this legacy has meant to each of you? And then we'll close with Alan leading us out in only his best way. Well, first of all, love to you, Lee. It's so great to see you on page. Love you. Miss you, girls. Um, it's, it's amazing to get to hang out with you guys tonight um, with all of you. It's been really, really lovely. Um, you know, it's, it's an incredible journey, like I said before, and it's the biggest blessing in my life is getting to be part of uh, part of your world to be part of the Disney family but to be part of this incredible legacy of, of music and and again you know for me and Alan hears this from me all the time it's Alan and Howard that that really started all of the second golden age uh, the renaissance for the studio and that we have been able to build upon the Little Mermaid and where we are today. And I'm just grateful to be a little piece of the puzzle, a little, oh, look at that big old 80s hair. Um, <laughs> what is on top of my head? Um, anyways, just to be a little piece of the puzzle in this in this journey that, that the Disney family has brought all of us together. And it's a wonderful club to be part of the Princess Posse. And uh, I love all these ladies. They're, they're all absolutely brilliant and truly, um, you know, honored just to get to be hanging out with all of you. So much love to all of you. Yeah, Alan, it's so great to see you. Golly, last time I saw you was in Japan. So eating sushi till we couldn't take in any more sushi. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. So, yeah, thank you so much, Nina. It's really oh. been lovely to be here. I uh, thank. I mean, it's the, the sentiment goes for everyone. So th I, I'm just uh, overwhelmed and really grateful for each of you. Yeah, me too. Me too. Thank you, Paige. Yes, I have to say before I talk about what we were talking about with our characters and what it's meant to us, I have to say that being the actors' fun tonight, people have to be reminded how so important this is right now. All of the people out of work. Um, and it's not just the actors and actresses, it's the stagehands, it's the people who work in the box office, it's, it's mm -hmm. everybody. And um, anything that you can afford to help with is greatly appreciated. And um, so, back on that. But being a Disney princess, who would have thought when I was a little girl that I went to go see Mary Poppins and fell in love with Mary Poppins and the Sherman Brothers, uh, that I'd be doing a princess all these years later. And um, we really... We really have to thank Alan Menken and Howard Ashman for what they did. They convinced Disney to begin the resurgence of animation with Little Mermaid. And all of these incredible films of these past 30 plus years, Alan, they, they may not have happened if it were for you. And um, no, Yeah, I don't even know, Paige. I don't even know if, if, if Lin-Manuel would tell stories the same way if there wasn't Menken and Ashman. You know, or well, Paige would all would tell stories the same way. Right. You know, Lynn, my, by the way, I, my sister, my older sister Faye is actually watching. She, she texted me in the middle of this. <laughs> I look thin, which I like. Oh! <laughs> um, <laughs> we need no more. But, 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 but the, Hunter School, the Hunter School and her classmate was Lynn Manuel Miranda. And Lynn would bug her constantly. Please, please, would your uncle sign this? Oh, I had a question about Little Mermaid. He was a fanatic. Anyway. Oh, well. Crazy. Well, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're, all of us are so grateful. And I, I like Jody, we, we do concerts and things together. And we meet all these generations because we're in the fourth generation now of fans. And uh, to hear their stories and how much the movie meant to them and um, allow them to be themselves and to, to grow. Um, it's an amazing thing to be a part of and without a doubt it's certainly the most um, rewarding part of my life other than my love of my family and my husband. Uh, mm -hmm. Being able to be the character and, and react and inter interact with the fans has been 
incredible. And now I'm just loving painting all these characters. I'm pa painting them on right at the moment, Leia. <laughs> 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 when I get her finished, but, uh, so it's um, it's been a great journey, a really great journey, and I've had the privilege of working with Howard. Uh, he and I shared so much. That'd be another whole segment. But we shared our love for Jerome Kern and Hammerstein, and talked music. He, he loved the early Princess Theater musicals, something that I did at Carnegie Hall. He, he would come to those, and um, he was a really special person, and we we're also blessed to know him. Thank you. Leia. Okay. <laughs> it's my turn. Um, I think everybody has a different start to their Disney princess journey. Mine began with the, aha, uh -huh, look at that. And with the, with the Disney storybook tapes. I had a few, but some of them got destroyed and chewed up by the cassette player, except for Cinderella. So I remember being a kid listening to Eileen Woods singing A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes and So This Is Love and just hearing her voice and playing that over and over and over again. But then cut to 15 or so years later and getting to actually sing for a Disney princess. So it's the gift that just keeps on giving and I still sing A Whole New World in concert and I pull somebody out of the audience to be the Aladdin for the evening and I've been doing this since what maybe 14 15 years ago or something like that um, when I was pregnant with my daughter that was the first time I actually did it and to be part of this group to be part of this club to be part of this incredible legacy that just it's, it's just an incredible gift that I'll be grateful for for the rest of my life and I know that there's going to be a five-year-old out there somewhere who will be listening to us singing the songs that are so closely associated with our voices and one day she's going to turn into an actual Disney princess and record a song that is that will completely change her life so to Alan, thank you. To Tim, thank you. I never got to meet Howard, um, but hearing the stories, it's it's just, and I and I have yet to see the documentary. Um, but yeah, to to be part of of such an incredible group of people, and, and not just the voice talent, but also the animators that brought all these characters to life, um, and and the ones that continue to keep on bringing them to life, and so many other. Um, theater writers and writers of pop music that just keep getting pulled into this group that makes this family bigger and bigger. It's just incredible to be a part of this. And I'm thrilled to be spending the time with, with all of you and getting to tell stories and reminisce. Um, and, and I'm thrilled to meet you, Nina. <laughs> I'm so thrilled to meet you. I'm waiting for today. Oh my God. And, my, and I told my daughter that I was going to talk to you today, and she's like, "Whoa, ah, so cool!" <laughs> you hear that song earlier? Her Tito sing that song earlier. Did you hear it, Nina? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, beautiful! beautiful. What a voice! Love you it. Amazing, Nina. Yeah. Great voice. Beautiful. Yeah, I heard it. Oh, 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 Oh my god! A D23! D23! Yeah. I remember that! <laughs> I don't have one yet. Yet! I don't get one. Don't worry about that one. Now, before <laughs> we go... Um, this thing is over. <laughs> as soon as it's over. Um, of course, I, I want to take this moment just to say thank you to Alan Menken, who has been... I don't know if... I hope... I know you know this. But the power that you have and that you've given with your art and your creativity to the world the lives you've inspired and the hope that you've given, which I think and truly is the greatest gift you can give to anyone is hope. And I think that your music um, has definitely left an indelible mark on me and many others like me. I have, to, I have to ask you before we go, what does it feel like when you know that there are drag queens all over the world performing <laughs> to um, Poor Unfortunate Souls? Mostly Poor Unfortunate Souls because everyone likes to be there. I know, well. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I, God. I, I, I did Harvey, Harvey Firestein did it both at the Hollywood Bowl and at uh, the Hollywood Bowl. Hollywood Bowl, that's great. Are you kidding? It's, I, th it's, I think it's perfect. Are you kidding? It's, 
It's great. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I was um I was lucky enough to attend that Carnegie Hall performance, and I will say um when Angela Lansbury came down and sang Beauty and the Beast, oh, at the yeah. end, I um I don't know if there was any other moment that really stands out to me as being one of the best moments of live performance I've ever seen, and I think it's a testament to your work. Um, I if you would be willing. I know um, you've been here a long time. If you'd be willing to send us out in song, I think we'd all be very grateful. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. I have a little, you know, I, I get, I'm just going to do the Disney songs. I have a little, like, uh, needle drop medley. Do it. Yeah, I mean, like, everyone should know. Oh. Alan Mekin, if you don't know, Alan Mekin is the biggest hero <laughs> ever. <laughs> Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? When you think my collection's complete. When you think I'm the girl, girl who has everything I got gadgets and gizmos and plenty I got who's it's and what's it's galore You wanna think of the bobs? I got twenty But who cares? No big deal I want more Look at me, I'm the king of New York Suddenly, I'm respectable, staring right at your lousy stature. Now, I've been with all the muckety mucks, I'm blowing my dough and go deluxe. And there I be, ain't I pretty? It's my city, I'm the king of New York. You ever heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon? Or ask the grinning bobcat why he grinned? Can you sing with all the voices of the mountain? Paint with all the colors of the wind. Paint with all the colors of the wind. Under the sea, under the sea. Darling, it's better down where it's wetter. Take it from me. Up on the shore, they work all day. Out in the sun, they slave away. While we devote full time to floating under the sea. Our guest, be our guest, put our service to the test, and a dinner here is never second best. Go on, unfold your menu, take a glass, and then you'll be our guest. We are guests, be our guest. Oh my! Mr. Aladdin, so what will your pleasure be? When you take your own and John the town, you ain't never had a friend like me. I will find my way. I can go the distance. I'll be there someday. If I can be strong, I know every mile will be worth my while. I will go most anywhere to feel like I belong. And at last I see the light, and it's like the sky is shifting. And at last I see the light, and it's like the world is new. And it's warm and real and bright, the fog has somehow lifted. All at once, everything looks different now that I see you. How does she know that you love her? How do you show her you love her? How does she know that you really, really, truly love her? It's not enough to take the one you love for granted. You must remind her all she'll be glad to say. How do I know? If I found you, would you let me come and stay? I ain't getting any younger. And before my dying day, I want space, not just air. Let them laugh in my face. I don't care. Save a place. I'll be there. Oh, 
there where they all live unaware. But I give, but I dare just to live one day out there. Even friends that somebody bends unexpectedly. Just a little change. Small to say the least. Both a little scared. Neither one prepared. Beauty and the beast. A whole new world. That's where we'll be. Thrilling chase. A wondrous place. Very much. Oh. Please, please, please. Donate. Donate, everyone. Please. Please donate to the Actors Fund. We need your help. Thank you all for joining us tonight for Stars in the House. It's been my honor to be here. Love you guys so much. I am love so you too. Love you all so much. To this incredible panel. I love you all very much. Thank you very much. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Love you all. Thank you.